A Murder at the End of the World, Season 1, Episode 3, Thoughts. This episode is called Chapter 3, Survivors. Another episode I love, spoilers for these first three episodes. And let's dive right in. So, just gorgeous lighting on the, like, the water as they drive through it and in, in the opening. I think it might be natural, but still, fantastic job capturing it. And there's also... I think, yeah, f shortly after when Darby's in her room, the the lighting, again, might be natural. They picked the exact right time to film it and were careful to, to capture it very, very nicely. And, yeah, they talk about, you know, oh, the, the GPS led them into quicksand. And I really love this, you know, the, the yeah, he says... I guess people trust the blue dot more than they trust themselves. And she says, stupid people. And he says, yeah, stupid. You know, and he's, he seems like he's agreeing with it. But yeah, like the show is making the point. We'd all like to think that we don't trust technology so much that it, you know, hurts us. But if we're being honest, you know, that's probably not quite the case. And... Yeah, you know, and especially someone, you know, Darby is constantly using technology. So the idea that that might hurt her is, of course, like she would have to completely change her life. And that's just not something she's comfortable with. So which, you know, understandably, that is not something, you know, that's usually a last resort. That's not something you choose willy nilly. And, yeah, pe keep, people keep tagging each other out to, to talk to Darby. And I really love Lume's comment that death and love, I suppose, comes and goes as it wishes. You know, very, just, yeah, really, really great. It's, you know, very, very wise thing and... Yeah, just, yeah. Let's see, and, um, right, yeah, um, I keep mispronouncing her name. I guess it's Sean, you know, points out impact isn't just having something to say, it's being heard. You know, and that's why Andy invited her, because a lot of people bought the book. So, you know, what, what was it? Don't bite the hand that might feed you. And, yeah, she, she first she sees Zeba wearing a mask, and then she imagines everyone wearing masks. And... I, I have to admit, at, at first I thought, oh, maybe she's been, like, poisoned, and that's why she's, like, hallucinating or something, and that's why she's following Thomas, but, or Tomas, so, you know, but, no, it's, you know, it's just to get a clear answer out of him about the, the cups to, to Bill Farah's room. I'm, I'm guessing it's that thing of, like, the dead talking to her, maybe, that she's seeing, or I guess it's maybe just a visualization of the fact that she's, yeah, she's, she's trying to figure out who it could be, figuring, well, it could be any of the, yeah. And, yeah, we're told there were three cups of tea to, to Bill's room. Great tension as she's following him, also. And... I can't help but wonder if at least one person did spot her when they're being when they're receiving their their training and you know if anyone asks I can neither conf your your answer has to be I can neither confirm nor deny but nobody wants to be the person who interrupts the boss as he's saying something important even if it's to say you know I, th I think someone is listening in on this and yeah, the um, um, Darby figures out the various c 
connections to to Bill. And we get another one of those like Ray doesn't understand um you know what's the word? He doesn't understand the yeah, you have to you have to make it clear what you what you say, you know. So she's like, so what's his deal? And and Ray's like, I don't I'm I don't have any information on him making on him negotiating any deals at the moment, you know. And yeah, and you know she says, I get, is anyone here normal? And he responds. No, no one. Not even you, Darby. I have to admit, I thought the response would be define normal. Because that's something we've come to realize in more recent years. There is no normal for us people. You know, there's there's like normal for various things in nature, but there's no human being who can be accurately described as just normal. And... Yeah, the the um, she spots someone going out into into the snow and yeah, very sus. It's no wonder she follows and I love the bit where she accidentally like I I guess it's like rocks that she that, that come loose and fall and she has to like hide and the person in the mask and and you know, it was you could sort of tell that he was wearing a mask from another shot earlier, but once he turns around and walks, you really see it, you know. And because the mask does serious damage to his, you know, as as he's wearing and not permanently his his peripheral vision, he can't see that she's there. And it is one of those things. I mean, just because there's rocks falling doesn't mean that there was a person there to loosen them. It could be just random, you know great tension as she stands there hiding and because he's so close she notices the footwear at, at the you know bottom of the like I'm glad we cleared this up which is of course go you know love these little you know that's a that's a clue that's something to yeah and he signals in Morse code which we know that she understands from, uh, you know, I think it was episode two that that was introduced, so, yeah, very and, and that is something, you know, if you're really into to technology, yeah, that's, you know, that's something you might have, have picked up. You know, Morse, binary, these kinds of things. And, yeah, she, yeah, she comes back to the room, and Ray helps with the you know the process of, of heating back up with some advice I quite appreciate the the detail that he points out you know don't warm up your extremities immediately if you do that that could actually cause injury and that's something that we didn't always know you know because you think well it's so cold you know my hands are freezing I have to get them warmed back up and let's see I, I read about this once I believe the thing is if after you, you know, the thing is, if you're, if part of your body is extremely cold, it might, there, there might be very little blood flow to that part of, of the body, you know, and you heating it back up is ensuring that there is more blood flow, and if that happens too fast, yeah, that, you know, the body can't completely keep up with that, and it could cause injury. And yeah, great little you know she she she's like okay if I have to stay up all night you know she she makes some, some coffee opens the the you know mini fridge gets out a coke and that triggers a flashback which yeah it's it's very accurate to you know if if you if there's something that you think of when you think of a person and they've recently died and that thing comes up you immediately think of them that's completely psychologically accurate and yeah you know he's like you can't seriously be drinking that and she's, you know and and he tries some as a 
oh, it tastes like actual vomit. And yeah, so they talk strategy in the car. And yeah, and back in the present, which is you know another great scene, and again like illustrates the 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 analytical thinking of her, and also yeah you know it is this is the time she doesn't have a co-conspirator in this because her you know fellow sleuth is dead, so the again I'm saying her referring to. Darby Hart, the character who identifies as female, not Emma Kareen, who I understand identifies as they, them. But, but yeah, so Darby does not have anyone to, to talk to about this, so instead we get it in the, in the form of this flashback, you know, how to proceed now. And let's see, the, the yeah, she, right. So she talks with Lee some, and she explains about the the mask, which you know I think I I I have to admit I didn't pick up on that, but I think I have now that she explained hearing her explain, I think I have seen it before. Yeah, Hong Kong protesters subverting the the facial recognition. Let's see, and yeah, and you know she points out. Yeah, and, and that means that anyone there could have, you know, it's not, like, specific to a certain, or, you know, it's specific to hackers. Everyone there is a hacker, so, you know, and the, let's see, yeah, so, yeah, Lee is helping out with the investigation, but she can't be talking that much to Darby, and I don't think Darby is confident that she trusts her yet. But, but yeah, you know, she points, they, they talk about, you know, why didn't Lee hack? And, yeah, she points out, I have a five-year-old who can't sleep. That's a full-time job. I don't want to let my husband down with this weekend, or, the, yeah, this get-together. That's another full-time job, which I quite appreciate. That's something, you know, not enough. It's it's getting better. It's been getting better in, in recent years, but a lot of people don't acknowledge how difficult it is for for mothers how much you know how how much and how hard work it is to take care of a, a kid and let's see then we have the right yeah and then she explains about the, the Hong Kong protesters and yeah you know Darby suspects Lee had an affair with Bill and it was, you know, it was almost cheating, but, you know, yeah, the, and, and she, Lee goes into the, the harmful effects of the revenge porn, which I really appreciate, you know, it was already, the, the gravity of it hit in episode one when it was first mentioned, but here to actually, you know, and, and again, like, what she says is very realistic based on what, you know, non-fictional people, women, have said about the effects of, of revenge porn. And, let's see, we have the, yeah, and the, you know, you have the line about, no one sees a 24-year-old girl coming. I am choosing not to make that dirty. And then we have the, Let's see. What on earth did I write? Uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to move on. But the oh right right yes, you know the the yeah Darby agrees to you know it's okay that Zoomer sleeps in the bed. And then she wakes up at 9.51, Lee and Zoomer are gone, and she slept through the alarm that Ray set. So we have yet another scene of Darby waking up, and there's something off. There's something going on that, that shouldn't, you know. And it's, like, it's possible that there, that this, that there's not, like, ill intent, that it's not that someone did something, 
you know, if she's awake for a really long time and then she finally falls asleep, she might oversleep, you know, but yeah, the fact that the it's it's a it's happened at least once in all three episodes now that she'll wake up and there's something. So yeah. Um let's see. Yeah, and there's there's a knock at the door and Ray helpfully informs her there's someone at the door. And yeah, she gets the the coat and note that says, you know, be there for a glimpse of the future. And yeah, he says it's unforgettable. And yeah, Darby <laughs> tromps right up to, to catch up to, to Rohan. And yeah, he admits, you know, he's been avoiding her. You know, Bill got him sober and now he's gone back to to drinking. And yeah, he points out, you know, which I, I don't, I'm not sure I've heard this as accurate, but it certainly does. It, it makes sense. I could imagine it being true. The climatologists, you know, because they know how bad the, the climate, climate change is, you know, a number of them are simply buckle and, and end up using something to, yeah. And let's see. Yeah, and you know, Bill helped by pointing out, you know, human beings are not the center of the universe. Death begets new life. And that is true, and that is something that can you know that can maybe help. You know, it's it's important to not despair because that doesn't help anyone. We can't fix things by, by you know, doomerism. And I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying that I haven't myself struggled with that. But, yeah, I, I really appreciate the, the show pointing that out instead of just leaving it as, oh, well, you know, it's, it's hopeless. Utterly, utterly hopeless. And then we see what they were going there to, to show off, and it's... A swarm of robots sounds sinister when I put it like that, doesn't it? But yeah, the you know they're building bridges and making sure that like ah, what's the word? Yeah, they're they're making they're they're doing. They're, it's basically a workforce that you know, means, you know, what was it Oliver said, that this means that, you know, when it gets especially bad, they can, you know, it, it allows us, or I guess it's before it gets especially bad, but it can allow us human beings to sit and, and figure out solutions instead of, you know, being stuck on the struggle bus the whole time. And, yeah, we... We go back to the focus on the footwear, and we have David being a dick to uh, Darby, and you know he says it's because he's rich, and she says if you were poor you'd still be a dick, which I you know I, I feel like that's it's that thing of power doesn't corrupt, power reveals. You know I personally. I sometimes agree with that, but I do think that it's more likely that, you know, yeah, some of the some of the people who've done the most damage are the the richest and most powerful. And yeah, she, you know, she sees the the she was watching the footwear. It was part of why she was trying to get rid of David, and then she spots that it's it's there. Or that she sees the footwear missing. And you know, okay, looking around the room, who's got the, you know, and, yeah, she spots them right next to, yeah, on the person right next to her, and it's Rohan, and then she repeats the Morse to, to let him know, just very, very nicely done, because there's, yeah, there's, even, yeah, that means she knows that he knows something, you know, very, very tense, and, yeah, you know, he 
he might be innocent, but he definitely knows something. And I really appreciate that by the end of the episode, we know at least some of the... Yeah. You know, apparently some, some critics didn't feel like this show moved quite fast enough. So far, I've been pretty happy with it. You know, I, f I feel like we're getting enough enough clues, enough red herrings that we're you know it's it's moving. Let's see, and I also saw someone say you know so someone felt that there was there were too many flashbacks. Some said that there's a lot of flashbacks, but they're a really strong element of the show. I tend to side with the the latter. I I don't think it's been too much, at least so far. And. Yeah, then we see Zoomer playing, you know, and at first it just looks like, oh, it's it's make believe. That's kind of cute, you know. He's five. He's still gonna, you know. But then the the, you know, she gets the helmet on, and it's an AR video game, or augmented reality. So yeah, very very cool, and it's, yeah, and and you know, he says, you know, and and the. You have the line about, you know, technology's exponential. <laughs> yeah, his, you know, his father is very clearly talking to him about a lot of this stuff. We've seen elements, evidence of that element before in, in the first episode also. And, yeah, you know, they talk about, you know, oh, he's, he's lucky. And then he says, except for when my parents fight. Did your parents fight? My parents fight about the future, which is just like I mean, they're they're both focused a lot on the future, but it also sounds a little sinister. Because you know, there's been a little bit. Every so often, Andy will have a moment where a line delivery or a look he gives feels a little off. Feels like there's something. You know, he's he's definitely a suspect, and him. Fighting with his mother, with with Zoomer's mother about the future, you know, kind of sounds like he has some idea about what he thinks should happen. And Lee, a young woman who has a a young son, and who has been, you know, ex yeah, has has been the victim of misogyny. She thinks what Andy is saying is completely wrong. And, you know, that does make it sound like, you know, he might be, you know, we. He's one of these rich, isolated people, and, and he has ideas that he thinks are going to be the future, and, you know, maybe not everyone would agree. Yeah, he, he might have some really, like, horrifying, inhumane idea for the future. And, you know, yet again, um, Andy interrupts as Zoomer is interacting with another person in what seems a perfectly friendly way. You know, it's one of those things like, okay, sure, if Andy, if, if Zoomer, like, runs up to someone and, like, I don't know, hits them or, or tries to tries to take something from them. Like, in episode one, one of them offers him some bread. You know, and, and Andy has a problem with that for some reason. Hypothetically, let's say that Zoomer just walked up and grabbed the bread off the plate of the of the person. Then it'd be like, okay, kid, listen to your dad. This is, you know, this is not okay. You can't be doing that, you know. But it's, each time, they're very careful. It's very carefully written and staged to where it seems perfectly fine, you know. So... Maybe he's just an overprotective, like, parent, you know, it's it's possible. Or maybe he's said something to Zoomer that he doesn't want others to hear. Because he has not yet intentionally let Zoomer be around others. Like, in episode, you know, here, Zoomer, you know, went off by himself playing. Because that's, you know... And, and Andy interrupts the moment that he catches Zoomer with Darby. In episode one, he specifically says, I'm sorry Zoomer's here, but, you know, he kept arguing and arguing, and eventually I said, okay, you can join us for dinner. And then every single time that Zoomer interacts with someone else, 
and he immediately shuts it down. So, you know, there's, yeah. It's possible that it's a red herring. If so, it's it's a delectable one. Let's see. Although I guess originally red herrings, the way they're used, probably weren't cooked. Anyway, yeah, the... And we have the... Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I really like that Andy says to, to Darby, do you know Walt Disney? And she says, I mean, I know a few of his movies. <laughs> because that's the thing, you know, she's she's 24, she's watched Disney movies, but he's this, you know, seclusive billionaire, you know, middle-aged or something. He's thinking about Walt Disney, the... Yeah the person who predicted certain things. And and it is, you know, I believe everything that Andy says in this episode about Walt Disney is completely accurate. I, I've, I It's been a while since I, I, but I have heard this stuff before, and it really is, like, it's wild to think, you know, considering how big, you know, and a lot of people still don't take animated feature films completely seriously, you know, I we've seen a lot of growth in that area, though. But it is the kind of thing where, like, like today, can you even imagine? Can you imagine not having animated features? That the only animation were short films. You know, there's just. But yeah, he knew that it was possible. He fought for it. Seven years later, they they put it out, and you know, yeah. It's it's a huge part. Like, there's a lot of people, if you just say the word Disney, the first thing they'll think of is one of the animated classics. You know, I used to be among them, though today Disney means many things to me. But, yeah, you know, so, which the show, which this, yeah, the show also shows, you know, the first thing Darby thinks of, you know, she doesn't think, oh, you know, rich middle-aged guy, he's talking about Walt Disney making things that were she's like oh you mean the yeah i mean snow white cinderella yeah I, i've seen you know and yeah and you have the thing about you know oh he was like making trains in his own house and people thought he'd lost his mind but then it led to theme parks you know and yeah you know they got two hamsters for zoomer thinking both were male, one of them was female, and then they started, you know, mating them, and or, you know, they did that themselves, and they were, you know, Zoomer was fascinated by the the genetic, yeah, and, and, and that makes sense, because I, I don't offhand know exactly how, but I, I'm pretty sure hamsters, like, reproduce much, much faster, which, you know, leave some of the women unsatisfied, then, you know, yeah, various other animals. So, yeah, hamsters would be a good way to, to know, oh, you know, stuff like eye color and, and such. And I like that, you know, Andy is like, at one point we had like 50, and Zoomer, without missing a beat, says, 67. <laughs> So it's like, no, no, he's been he's been paying attention to the conversation, you know, whilst also trying to, to catch the crown. And, yeah, you know, that's how Andy got the idea for mating the AI with each other. I love the thing of the... the when we first see Zoomer playing by himself, it looks like, oh, it, you know, I, I know, I, I mentioned, it looks like make-believe. He's, like, you know, reaching for, for something. And then when we see it, you know, she gets into it almost immediately, like, catching the crown. And, yeah, you know, at first it's like, oh, it's, it's right in front of you. Know, just walk a few steps. You know, but then it speeds away. The faster she moves, the faster it goes away. And that's such an excellent representation of video games, which I love. It's a medium I absolutely love. The moment that you think, you know, it, it, at first, it looks like, oh, you know, I can, I can definitely do this. And, you know, maybe early on it goes well, but it gets increasingly difficult, you know, to, to keep you playing. And, yeah, so that was an excellent, it, it, because, like, if you go back and you watch the scene, it's, you know, I, I don't think they spend more than maybe one entire minute 
on the on the AR game, but from from the moment that we realize it's an AR game, but it gets across so much in so little time. And I love the little child friendly element. Uh, you know, the there's a there's a was that a hamster maybe, but a, a, there maybe a teddy bear, so some kind of fuzzy thing in like a suit of armor, and he goes hello. It's just yeah, that's the kind of thing that's really going to appeal to a five year old, you know. And let's see, yeah, and so Andy tells Darby, you know, I think you should go home. I don't approve of you interrogating my guests. And, you know, I, I do really love, you know, she's like, I hacked the, you know, the, the security feed. And he's like, yeah, I, I know. And water's wet and oxygen is breathable. Tell me something I don't know, you know. And the the thing about, you know, yeah, they, they you know, Ray kept a chat, kept, kept an eye on the the what was it the blood pressure or something like that you know there was a spike four minutes and thirty six seconds before the person in the mask showed up so yeah that's it it can't possibly have been the person in the mask we find out you know by the by the end of the episode it's completely clear that was Rohan and yeah so the the we we see the uh, the news broadcast about his death, and I love that he removed the S from Shell all over the world. It's very very nicely done. Yeah, because that's the thing. Like you know, when you when you're driving at night and you see you know Shell, it's like okay, you know if you need you know gasoline or a snack. Or some absolutely disgusting, I hear, sushi, you know, that's where you go. But if you're driving a night and suddenly you see a sign that says hell, it's like, ah, you know, just, so that's, yeah, very nicely done. And that's the, you know, some considered him a prankster, some thought he was an activist kind of thing. And the story they've been given is that he was vacationing alone. Hmm... That's very, very suspicious that the, you know, and, and yeah, that's, that's how you avoid getting asked uncomfortable questions. You know, you make up a story like that. And yeah, and in flashback, we see that the, the surviving target, um, I believe, Marta, the surviving target of the Silver Doe killer, you know, she she talked to the police and they victim blamed. Let's see, and and yeah, you know, at first she's she's like, why why are you so interested in this? You know, and Darby says, you know, when I was the age of your kids, I thought I really mattered, and then I grew up and I realized I really don't. And I you know I want them to grow up in a world where they do matter, so, something like that. You know, and. Yeah, that is, again, that's the kind of thing of, I, I, ultimately it could refer to, to multiple things, but I feel like it's especially here referring to the misogyny. You know, when, when Darby was a child, yeah, she, you know, she, she didn't yet realize how badly women were being treated. And then, yeah, you know, she, she came of age, she realized... What was the thing about thousands, I forget the number, but I think it was, yeah, 40,000 unidentified dead, 20,000 20, of them were victims of murder, and the majority of those 20,000 were women. You know, that's, yeah, that really wakes you up to the, to the reality of, of misogyny. And uh, Marta, you know, agrees to, to help some more, stating, I don't want this to happen ever again, you know. And that's, again, that's why Darby in the present keeps looking into this mystery. And, yeah, so Darby goes to, to Rohan's door and, and knocks, 
no, you know, do, does not get in, though there's some, some noises in there. I, I thought, or I guess it is possible that already at that time there was something, but certainly late, not long after, you know, there's clearly something going on. And, yeah, Todd shows up and the, you know, he's like, okay, we, I got to get you packed, got to get you out of here, you know, a storm is coming, I know, and she made sure that she could still get in by placing gum at, at the, the, the door, so, yeah, very, very, because, because, like, you know, no, I'm not gonna, you know, because basically, they were thinking, well, if you take a, you know, Andy took her ring, and he's like, this way, if she, you know, she's not going to leave her room because then she'd be locked out. You know, that would be ridiculous. You know, who's going to do that? That's that's going to keep her in her room. No, that absolutely did not work. And I love Todd's like, really, really. You know, it's it's a nonverbal reaction, but he's clearly like exasperated with her. And and she's like defiant. She's not apologetic at all. And, yeah, so Rohan calls, you know, and she's, yeah, she's about to, to she's not going to, to just walk out the door and, and talk and, and leave with Todd. She's, you know, yeah. I actually, I have no idea what her plan is, but, you know, anyway, the, the yeah, the, the phone rings, and I did for a second think it would be really funny if it was, like, Andy calling back and being like really pissy about you know how dare you say that you're keeping your room nah -uh, like it's this, but no it's Rohan and he says Bill had a plan something important but he didn't want to talk about it over the phone he said to come to his room and that's why he went there and the, the mask was just to, to help keep it secret it wasn't that he had any ill intent and yeah, we hear sounds of struggle over the phone, and Rohan dies in a in a room full of of people, and Andy says, "Get everyone underground." And yeah, I again, I definitely don't think that this is some like boking accident or something there's definitely murder afoot here and yeah the f the fact that it happened in this room for you know that's that's very interesting that it's yeah it's, you know i'm i'm th i'm thinking he might have been like in his room or something when he first got on the phone with her and you know we hear sounds of struggle so maybe he's like running away from whoever was was in there with him attacking him or something and he makes it to the 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 place full of witnesses and then collapses and yeah it's it's of course one of those things where well if he was attacked by one person and here we have a room full of witnesses it must not have been one of them because if rohan is like running and someone is like following him that's gonna look incredibly suspicious like even if you're running after Rohan because you're like no I'm trying to help I'm sorry I know I came on a little strong I'm trying to help you no that you look incredibly guilty you know that uh, okay I understand why you're okay um this is not my knife and that is not his blood but you no, know, so yeah, I, I I'm really looking forward to to I didn't it, it went a little too fast for me to pick up if everyone was in the the room there at the end. Or if at least one was was missing. But yeah. Um really excited to see. It's it's gonna be difficult to wait almost a a week. But yeah. Uh next episode I should be able to do Tuesday of next week, so the same day that it premieres. So, yeah. Until then, keep watching for clues.